Hello, and thanks for tuning in to this part of our video series titled Under Pressure, a focus series on hypertension. This video is going to focus on the use of thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics for the treatment of hypertension. The term thiazide diuretics is used to encompass both thiazide-like diuretics, such as cortalidone and endapamide, as well as true thiazide-type diuretics, such as hydrochlorothiazide, or HCTZ, and chlorothiazide. What distinguishes these two categories from each other is the pres presence of a benzothiazide ring, as shown here at the bottom. Whereas thiazide-like diuretics do not possess this, true thiazide diuretics do possess this. As a way of brief introduction to these drugs, thiazides were first discovered somewhat serendipitously in the search for a better carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. When thiazides were first introduced in the 1950s, they were among the first oral diuretics and, interestingly, were used predominantly for volume overload in heart failure patients. It was quickly identified that these agents had antihypertensive effects, and their use for this indications, indication was pursued shortly thereafter. Thiazide diuretics act in the distal tubule of the nephron. It is here that they act to inhibit sodium and chloride co-transport across the epithelium. Doing so increases sodium and chloride concentration in the latter parts of the nephron, which indirectly increases potassium excretion, increases urine volume, decreases plasma volume as well as cardiac output, and ultimately leads to a reduction in blood pressure. Interestingly, the diuretic response seen with thiazide diuretics causes only an acute or transient blood pressure lowering effect. Plasma volume returns to near normal levels uh, shortly after initiation of therapy. But what we do find is that vasodilation is an important mechanism in the long-term blood pressure lowering effects that we see with thiazide diuretics. The mechanism whereby this occurs is largely unknown, but we do know it plays a significant role. This table simply lists the various thiazide diuretics that we use, as well as their typical starting and maximal daily dose. It is worth noting that these agents vary in potency. For example, hydrochlorothiazide is a much weaker uh, diuretic than is chlorthalidone. Um, and for that reason, the amount of electrolyte disturbances that you can see with each of these agents varies according and, and depending on the dose that is being used. As one would expect with the thiazide diuretics, electrolyte disturbances can be observed. Hyponatremia, hypochloremia, and hypokalemia are all examples of electrolyte disturbances that can be seen with thiazide diuretics. In addition, uric acid and calcium concentrations can be increased in the presence of thiazide diuretics. Hence, patients with gout should initiate these drugs with caution. Thiazides have also been associated with potentiating diabetes and worsening lipid profiles. Although these effects have been observed, it's inconsistently reported. And suffice it to say that these agents may play a small role in worsening diabetes or hyperlipidemia, but it is unlikely that they impact long-term therapy for these comorbidities. Thiazide diuretics lose their effectiveness at a creatinine clearance less than roughly 30 milliliters per minute. And the reason for this is that the drug itself is unable to make it to the site of action within the nephron. For this reason, patients who are anuric are contraindicated to receive thiazide diuretics. As previously alluded to, patients with gout should use caution when initiating thiazides. And then lastly, our elderly patient population is more vulnerable and susceptible to the hyponatremic effects of thiazide diuretics, and thus should be monitored more cautiously. I'd also like to note that some of the thiazides are sulfonamide derivatives, hence you'll be flagged with a warning anytime a patient has a sulfa allergy. Thiazides rarely, if ever, are associated with this cross-reactivity with sulfa drugs, and is generally not considered an absolute contraindication. However, clinician discretion should be used. As you can imagine, patients who are on thiazide diuretics require monitoring of their electrolytes, blood pressure, and renal function. How frequently these are monitored depends on the patient, their comorbidities, etc. That concludes this presentation of Under Pressure, a focus series on hypertension, as we talked about thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics.